Yo, what's going on, everybody? So I got a little free time at the moment, so I'm going to do this next episode of my podcast while I'm thinking about it. I'm not giving you unsolicited advice. This is turning out to be a really great thing for me to do. I'm going to keep telling you my stories and gathering stories and listening for situations that make me go like, oh, yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. (laughs) So today's podcast, I'm not sure of the title yet. Uh, Let me see. Oh, um, and how did that work out for you? That's what the name of today's podcast is. So for this one, I'm going way back, way back to 2011. I think I was 20 years old at the time. And I had a friend who was about to make a decision that honestly even he knew that that decision wasn't good for him. But in light of the name of my podcast, you see what I mean? Like he, no one, he didn't actually say it He didn't actually say that I was giving him unsolicited advice. But when I go back to this situation and I think about his response, I'm not going to repeat it. I realized he was just going to do whatever he wanted anyway. Right? So, again, just like the other videos and other recordings that I've uploaded to my channel, I was truly concerned, genuinely concerned, probably even more than anyone else was. Because I didn't want to see the heartache that would come about. And needless to say, you know, like, and let's be real, it's one thing to be young and dumb and to make decisions that aren't the best for you. That's kind of what you do as a young person, but there becomes a certain age where you just can't do that anymore. And it's really not that far after 18, quite frankly. For those of you who think that you can keep doing it and keep on going and think that you won't have more repercussions, life is going to catch up to you. So, (laughs) um, when I think about this particular situation, I remember asking him, are you sure that this is what you want to do? And it was the way he said yes that was scary. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm not. He was like, well, I'm not going to not do it, is what he said. So, um, and when you're genuinely concerned about someone and you care about them, you, it, it hurts when someone chooses a bad decision. So no matter how much you may want to say that I'm giving you unsolicited advice, you know the decision you are making is bad for you. And whether or not you want to listen, only you are being impacted because I'm not going along with you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's a great decision and applaud you. What did I do? I created distance. Man, so, and and that's the thing, time flies, just like my other videos. Time flies when you make decisions, when you make horrible decisions, especially ones that hurt yourself or those that hurt others. So that was 2011, fast forward to 2016 the end of 2016 to early 2017. It's been almost seven years since I've seen this guy. Seven years. You know, and it's just so funny to me how people can put up a, like a facade, like, oh yeah, everything's okay now, we're all good. And it's like, 
you can say that, but I see the broken glass that will never be completely healed. I can see it in your eyes. Um, and this is when I had learned the hard lesson of, if you haven't seen me in two years, we don't know each other anymore. I had to learn that. So this guy, we met up, he was telling me how things were going and you know, the things that he went through, etc. We were just kind of catching up. And I, another thing I also learned with seeing him the second time around, having him, you know, come over my house and everything. Um, I learned that if someone's life is a mess and your life has peace, you cannot be friends with them because they will do whatever they can to make you lose the peace that you have. And that's exactly what he did. So I let him, long story short, I can't really remember why I made the decision, but he was going through a difficult patch. He wasn't with his wife anymore. I think he was separated and he was on child support or something. I think I remember him saying something about he needed a place to stay at. Initially what happened is he had fell asleep. Like we played games all night and he had fell asleep on the couch. So I just went and got a blanket and you know, just threw it on him. And then I went back to bed. The following day he made the statement of he needed some place to go to. And I hadn't really caught it because I was dealing with a lot. I had just been wrongfully terminated from this job that I had, but I had already had another job that I was working that made more. So it was, it's just funny how life works out sometimes, you know? You don't really have time to just sit down and think about the things that happen to you. You're just gonna have to take it. You have to take basically getting knocked, knocked out, knocked in the face and get right back up and move on like nothing happened because that's exactly what I did. Found another job and then when that temp job ended, I found another job. What are you going to do? So um, there was already a lot of stuff going on in my life. Um, long story short, I decided to let him uh, crash for a couple of days. So it kind of started out as like a visit, really. And you know, I was going to let him stay there for a little bit. And I'm sitting here working on trying to get him. I'm, I'm sitting here trying to, I'm getting like paperwork together and I'm getting ready to go to my landlord and discuss how I can add him to the lease. That would have been the biggest mistake of my life. Let me back up real quick. So remember when I told him that he could stay for a couple of days or for a week or whatever. I don't think I really gave a specific time. I just kind of knew that I was going to have to do something. Um, that I found this out from an from someone else after I put him out, not even two weeks later. This dude started, he came into my house the day that he asked to stay there. He had lied to someone and told them that I took money from him but I had never charged him for anything. So the reason why I'm talking about this, think about that. Think about how initially I basically was saying that I was looking out for him. He took it as unsolicited advice. Here's another situation where I realized that that had happened. I had to recognize you're still going through life acting like you know everything. You're still going through life, not listening to anyone else. And you're still causing your own problems because you are basically telling everyone 
that you know what is best. You are basically telling everyone, including me again for the second time, that I was giving you unsolicited advice about your marriage or whatever. But unfortunately, I got to experience from you firsthand that you were dishonest. So everything that you said about your wife being difficult, I don't believe that now. Because you started off before you were even in my house, you were already lying on my name, saying that I took money from you. Do you see the manipulation behind that? Everything that I tried to do for this person, it fell flat. I had the best intentions. I wanted what was best for him and I wanted him to get back on his feet. And what happened? He basically said that he knew what was best. And I see now that I have encountered this more in my life than I realized. They never gave the exact wording, but the thing is, if I'm giving you unsolicited advice, then why is your life a wreck all on your own? I found this out too after I put him out. After I put him out, I found out that his mom wouldn't let him come back and live with him. Now that's, that's saying something right there. He wasn't that old. He was a couple years younger than me, maybe 22 at the time. That, that's a major red flag. Why won't your mom let you back home? I could go back and move home with my parents if I had to. Well, what's wrong with you is what I started thinking. So then I had to recognize the person that I thought I knew is completely gone. It's one of those lessons that, you know, you get burned. You get burned by you are no longer the person I thought you were. It's been too long. We're completely different. And f from where I was standing, all of your problems are self-inflicted because you still, don't how to, you still don't know how to listen and you're still basically telling everyone that they are giving you unsolicited advice. When I tell you the amount of people that bought into his story that I took money from him, and quite frankly, God knows what else he might have said to get people to believe his story. I don't know. Who knows? But here's the thing. After I put him out, I realized he got what he wanted. He robbed me of peace. He robbed me of peace. You cannot be friends with someone who wants your life. Keep people at your house. All of these lessons I learned after that. The worst part was me having good intentions. Maybe if I had been more skeptical, more doubtful, the situation wouldn't have happened, right? So if you know someone in your life right now who no matter what you do or say, they're always chanting that phrase like a little, ooh, I almost cursed. They're always chanting that phrase like a little sensitive child. You're giving me unsolicited advice. You're giving me unsolicited advice. You're giving me unsolicited advice. I hate that these doctors and well-known people and like, they, they train people to use that phrase. It's like, it's making them immune to wisdom. It's so foolish and they need to stop telling people that. So you got all of these people trying to look out for you and you're telling all of them that they're giving you unsolicited advice, but you're running back later talking about how you need help and how everything would have been fine if only you had just kept helping me out for one week longer. None of this ever would have happened. Excuse me? If only you had of. But you didn't want to listen to what I had to say. 
So was that unsolicited advice or do you just still not know how to listen? <laughs> after that happened, after I put him out, I realized how much of a blessing it was for me to find out everything I did. And the funny thing is the same day that I put him out was the same day that I was going to go to my landlord and ask what they needed to make it official. It had still only been like a week and a half at this point, so it was like a visit really. Do you know how, how upside down my life would have turned if I had gone to my landlord first? If I hadn't happened to find out those other things? The most dangerous thing on this earth is a jealous, envious person who calls themselves your friend. And I'm gonna add something to that. The most dangerous person on this earth is a jealous, envious, evil person who calls themselves your friend so that they can mess up your life because they know that their life sucks. That's the most dangerous person on this earth. You know what the irritating thing is? I know that he's still out there doing that to other people. He's doing it to other people. He hasn't stopped. I have no faith that he's stopped. He's going around telling everyone that he knows best to stop giving him unsolicited advice, right? Quite frankly, stop giving me unsolicited advice. Yada, 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 yada. But your life, you keep, your life keeps getting nuked, like straight up nuked. And you don't, you still think that you know best. Do you see why I have a problem with that ridiculous phrase? Stop giving me unsolicited advice. You, you are not in a position to act like you have it together because you don't. You don't know what you're talking about. You need to learn to shut up and listen or your life is going to keep eating at you like that. You're gonna keep making all these mistakes and I'm gonna turn 34 next month. Dude is about to be 30 years old. So you have all of this baggage, all of these things in your past that didn't have to happen to you. You just didn't wanna listen. And every person, every young person has a stage of like this in their life. I understand that where they think they know everything. Certainly teenagers did it. I know I was one of those teenagers, but I reached a point in my life very early when I learned my actions have consequences. And just because you feel like doing something doesn't mean you should. Just because something feels good doesn't mean you should keep doing it, right? So, like I always say, just like in my last video, fast forward 10 years, the decision you are making right now at this moment, fast forward 10 years, where is that going to take you? Where are you going to be? I have only seen him one time since that year. I haven't seen him since. And quite frankly, I can go the rest of my life without ever seeing him ever again. I tried to be a friend to so many people who didn't deserve it. And my kindness was abused. That that changed me that day. I changed in a good way, but also in a bad way because I assume, I automatically assume that everyone has an ulterior motive and I just can't shake that. I changed. I wish the relationships I have with people, the friendships, any kind of relationship, that I could go into it without thinking that I'm going to get my heart torn apart. 
for trying to be a good person. I can't shake it. That thought is always in the back of my mind with everyone who is kind to me. It changed me. So if you were out there and you were listening to this video, you were listening to what I am saying, if you are about to do something that you know is not good for you, and you haven't made the decision yet, you need to listen to the people who are looking out for you. Enough with this unsolicited advice crap. These people don't know what they're talking about. The people who are always talking about others, giving them unsolicited advice, their lives are a mess because I have more stories that I haven't even told y'all yet. They're too busy trying to not listen to anyone else instead of trying to think about the decisions that they're making for themselves and then wonder what the heck happened. You destroyed your own life. You can only be mad at yourself. Stop trying to act like it's everyone else's fault. Oh, that's unsolicited advice. Oh, that's unsolicited advice. I'm really tired of hearing that, especially now that I know the gravity and the depth behind the foolishness that created the phrase in the first place. It's not unsolicited advice when someone is looking out for you. You not wanting to listen is a you problem. I urge you, if you are the person like me who genuinely cares and wants to help other people, I urge you not to lose that side of you because for the most part, I have. I'm not like I used to be. I won't jump to help someone. In previous videos, I was seeing that, you know, I am that way. I had to realize that I have changed. And while I like to think I'm still like that, I'm not. There, there, is, there is a likelihood of me saying something to someone if they're unaware. But it's probably almost just as likely for me to not say anything. You see how much I've changed? I was so certain in my previous video, excuse me, that I would always say something, but I don't think I'm like that anymore. Because I'm thinking of instances recently where I didn't say anything but could have. So I'm hoping that if you were like the way I used to be, I'm going to say I'm maybe 50-50 now. There's a 50% chance I might tell you, and there's a 50% chance I might not say anything. So, I guess you have two options. You can help someone and deal with them trying to say that they don't want advice from you. Or... You could just let them do whatever they want and just remove yourself and actually get to a point where you don't even ask them about it, ask them about the decision they made, or you don't even entertain any of the things that they do or say. And you can't have a relationship with someone that you don't talk to. It's very draining to talk to someone who thinks that they know everything. So with reference, to everything I've said in this video. If it's quote unquote unsolicited advice, if you are, there's someone you care about and you're trying to help them learn a life lesson without having to experience the pain, I admire you, but I also want you to know that it's okay to stop I wish I had stopped looking for the best and assuming the best and projecting the positively because it allowed me to get burned two, three more times when I already should have realized the kind of person that he was. 
if I'm being honest, he was never my friend. I was his friend. You notice the difference there? So to wrap up the video, I'm gonna say this. If you have to find balance with this, because not everyone's gonna to wanna to listen. Some people are just plain hard at it, but some people genuinely will not mind if you tell them something to make them better or to keep them from destroying their life. You have to find the balance. So, if you are not quite sure how to go about doing it, sometimes the best thing to do is just say it. Just speak your mind and see how it's received. And when in doubt, you can always ask, how did that work out for you?